in Hopi culture, there's a fantastic practice called the Naya. The Naya is a coming together of people from different backgrounds, different skills and talents who can make something wonderful happen for the community. Perhaps a birthing ceremony or a wedding even. So in this context, at Native Public Media, we have our own Naya and we bring together the talents and skills of different people to accomplish all that we can on behalf of our tribal communities. And to this end, I want to thank everyone who has contributed to Native Public Media, all the lawyers in the room who have given us so much of their valued time to make sure that our policy program is effective and impactful and moves our Native nations forward. After leaving the FCC, I spent some time uh, at the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and while I was there I had, had an opportunity to travel out to the Hopi Reservation in northern Arizona and visit the public station there, uh, KUYI, I believe, uh, and was just blown away by what they were doing. The, the, you know, the, the aspiration for all broadcasters is to serve their community and I've never seen anything like what that station does within the reservation community there. Uh, the, the services they provide, they are truly dedicated to the people they, pro they provide service to, to their listeners. The station was really part of the fabric of the community. I got that not only from the people at the station I met and talked to and saw what they were doing, which was uh, impressive enough, but then just being on the reservation, we visited the high school there, seeing the way the, the students and everybody else reacted to the people from the station. It was not only an educational experience for them, but it was, a, again, it was part of weaving the station in with the community. And I, as I said, the, you know, all broadcasters aspire to be, to serve their communities, and everybody talks a good game. But I never saw, in my experience, either at the FCC or at the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, a station that really lived those values like KUYI. Ken talked to me about this. I was pretty well hooked. Ken came in wearing a t-shirt, which he probably shouldn't have been wearing a t-shirt so casual to work. But anyway, he had a t-shirt on that day. And he said, yeah, this is one of the t-shirts I got, you know, when I was at the stations. And I said, well, what do you mean? And he said, well, this t-shirt represents, and he started going into sort of what did the image on the t-shirt represent in terms of our cultural tradition at that particular tribe that that particular station had on the t-shirt and he was going through this with me and saying you just don't know what it's like at these stations when you go visit they are doing the exact kind of public service that everyone envisions stations to do but with very few resources but they have so much energy and passion about what they're doing um, this is the exact type of client we should be working with. When you visit a tribal station or talk to people uh, there you, you, uh, you know it matters uh, most lawyers don't produce anything don't get to see any results. Uh, from a purely sort of lawyerly point of view, it's great because, and I think this is sort of how native public media feels, no one's been there before. There's lots that's needed to be done, but nobody's really pulled it together and tried to do anything. Um, so you can make things happen. You can change, actually change the law. It's really important so that Native Americans are uh, meaningful players uh, in the world of wireless telecommunications and broadband and that they've got uh, you know, their fair share of the airwaves. We're at a very important time in Indian country. Um, we're experiencing some uh, phenomenal development that we've waited generations for, and um, we need the further guidance and leadership of our elders, and we need to think about using things like broadcasting technology to spread their voices. To have the ability to speak our own language, um, to have our programs on the air reflect those values that are most dear to us, to validate who we are as a people. We have such diversity in Indian country and so much to contribute. And the world is simply better off with our voices at the table. Cultural preservation is much higher on their list of priorities uh, than it is for the common um, radio or television station, even the common public uh, station. Um, many of them want to uh, preserve language. Uh, so just talking uh, a native language uh, is a way of teaching it and a way of keeping it alive 
uh, as a language, not just some museum piece. But it's also um, uh, teaching cultural values uh, using uh, this, this, this broadcast tool uh, to strengthen their communities. Indian country is filled with cultures that are some of the most highly adaptive societies in the history of the globe. Uh, you know, the horse was not ours, but we made it ours, so much so now that we're portrayed as one, some of the greatest horse cultures in, in history. We need to continue uh, nurturing those adaptive skills to new technologies and to make them culturally relevant in our communities. Um, native public media can be a powerful tool of change uh, there as well. To the extent that anybody wants to do good in the world, there are obviously countless ways you could try to do it. I'm not sure there's a way that immediately comes to mind that you could get as much bang for your buck, as much good bang for your buck, as uh, supporting one of these stations. Mostly because they, you know they operate on a very small budget. Uh, there's no fat in those budgets, <laughs> you know. Uh, and, and so a small contribution can make an enormous difference. If there's any you know ideally deserving organization of assistance of any kind, this is ideal because um, because of the kind of, of level of commitment these stations had. This work is so important because communities anywhere you go, including tribal communities, need information and communications highways. It's as simple as that, but we can't do it alone. And one of the things that I, I am so proud of at Native Public Media is our work on the policy program that has involved hours and hours of contribution by lawyers across the country. And tonight, I want to thank them for their contribution for making Native Nations stronger and for making our communications network vital and important and critical for tomorrow's future. Wow, that's great. That, that, can, that can like be the end piece. <laughs>